Right, I'm going to conduct a really interesting interview today with a gentleman I've met at the Nigerian High Commission, very interesting gentleman um, who's been connected with Nigeria for one way or, well, for one way or another, probably over the last... Um, well, since 1970. I went to Nigeria in 70. Okay. If you please like to just give me a bit of insight that you gave me earlier on with regard to Nigeria and the whole politics and the issues that we're having today, it'd be really interesting to um, get an angle from you on what exactly happened. Well, for me, the problem today, wow, well, it goes back to the Muslim conquest of the North with Usman and Danfodio and the Fulani Hausa conquest of the North and the North becomes Muslim and when the British colonized the North in 1900, what do we the British do? We very cleverly rule with a few hundred district officers through the Muslim emirs. It was the best thing that ever happened to Islam in Nigeria. Because before then, if you were a Muslim, you went say to the Teve area, what would happen? You'd be dead. Under the British, you could go as a Muslim trader, and you could live and you could spread your message of Islam. So the British enabled Islam to spread in Nigeria and the British stopped the spread of Christianity because Lugard kept missionaries out of the north. He only let missionaries go to the parts that were not under Muslim rule, like the Jos Plateau. So the Christian church in the Middle Belt thrived in areas that had never been conquered by the House of Fulani. Why are there huge areas of the north of Nigeria depopulated today? The answer is jihad. Because those who weren't enslaved by the House of Fulani or conquered by the House of Fulani, they either died by the sword or they fled to the hills, like the plateau, like the Gwoza Hills in Bornu. And in those hills, when I was there in the 1970s, there were no Muslims, none whatsoever. The people followed African traditional religion and were becoming Christians. Because down on the plain, it was the Muslim Kanuri, and they're the ones that slave raided. So what's going on today in the Middle Belt? It's nothing to do with herdsmen and uh, uh, farmers. It's nothing to do with Muslim herdsmen, nomadic Fulani, and settled Christian farmers. No, and it's certainly nothing to do with climate change driving out the Fulani. This is quite simply jihad. This is just an extension of Usman Dan Fodio's jihad by other means. But nobody in England dare call it jihad because they're all shit scared of being called Islamophobic. Well, I'm not. I don't hate any Muslims. But I think Islam is of the devil, and it has to rule, and it must rule Nigeria. Islam a religion of peace? Don't make me laugh. Where is Islam a religion of peace? Where Islam rules? Where it doesn't, that is the region of war. That is Islamic theology. That's what this is. So Those who are for violent jihad, in my view, they have the historic pedigree in Islam. They're the Salafists. Now Islam is a broad church. Islam encompasses all lots of people. Most Muslims are not terrorists. But the people who are around us today, here and in Nigeria, who are terrorists, by and large are Muslims and a particular kind of Muslims. They are violent Wahhabi Salafists. When I say that, I won't have some idiot accusing me of Islamophobia. They should credit me with a little knowledge of Islam, its history and theology. This isn't about Muslims versus Christians. It's about Islam must rule, Islam must triumph. And that's the case in Nigeria, and it's the case here too. Except here they can be a bit quieter about it. Thank you for that. I really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah. Really interesting. Please, can I just have your name? Can you just tell me your name for? You give me yours, I'll give you mine. Okay, well, we'll just end.